Raider Nation, what's going on? Happy Monday, and today's show is presented by Panda Subs. If you're trying to bulk up like Tanner Muse, then go to pandasups.com, use code Raider Nation, where you can save 40% off on the best workout supplements, and I continue to recommend the protein. It's absolutely incredible. So what's coming up here on today's show? We're going to be breaking down some rumors around Orlando Brown. What are the likely chances of him becoming a Las Vegas Raider? There's a report out there on some mutual interest with Melvin Ingram. I'm going to give you my two cents on that. And at the very end of today's show, we're going to talk about Tanner Muse. And as I'm sitting here, we also got a little bit of an update, so even more information at the end of the show. So before we get into all the information seriously go ahead and hit that big red button that says subscribe because guess what if the Raiders go out and trade for Orlando Brown Jr. we're going to be making a video if they go out and sign Melvin Ingram we're going to go ahead and make the video if you're looking for non-stop coverage around the Raiders for this large price of zero dollars and zero cents for the next 365 days then you are in the right place the link is below youtube.com slash Raiders report Let's get into the latest news and rumors around not only the Raiders, but I actually want to also break some stuff down here around the National Football League. And we're going to talk about one Orlando Brown Jr. for the simple fact of this. One of the biggest needs for this Raiders team entering the 2021 NFL Draft is the right tackle position. Well, we all know that Brown has made it pretty obvious that he is wanting to get out of Baltimore after having a lot of success last season playing at the left tackle position. The biggest issue is, well, he's actually a right tackle. The other interesting part about this is Alejandro Villanueva, who is actually, interestingly enough, played left tackle last year for the Pittsburgh Steelers. We've talked about him a few times here on the Raiders Report. He's visiting with Baltimore, right? So obviously the asking price for Orlando Brown from Baltimore I do think is going to be high, but I'm also in the mindset of this. If they go out and they bring in Villanueva, I do think that could potentially take away some of Orlando Brown's trade value. So what I'm going to hit you guys with is this. Here's a nice little trade idea that I'm cooking up right now. The Raiders receive Orlando Brown Jr., a 2021 first-round pick. So basically we are swapping our first-round picks and we're swapping our second-round picks. Then you also throw in our third-round pick, pick number 79. So what do you guys think about this idea? Because the Raiders report is about finding NFL news, finding NFL rumors, and then you go out and you basically apply it to see, does this make sense for the Raiders? Not only do we talk about the latest news and rumors, I also try to educate the audience and say, hey, is this realistic? Is it not? Because it's already trending on Twitter. It's already trending, trending everywhere that, hey, this could actually happen. So let me know. What do you guys think about this? Who wins the trade? Type LV for the Raiders or type BAL for the Baltimore Ravens. All right, so let's look at the picks after the trade. Like, let's just say the Raiders, they pull the trigger. They go out. They trade for Orlando Brown Jr. He's now going to play right tackle. The reason why I actually think that the deal that I just showed you is pretty good for the Raiders is because you don't really lose any picks in any round. Sure, you move down to pick 27. Sure, you move down to pick 58. But you can still address a lot of your big-time team needs with the picks that you have remaining. So right now, as it stands, the Raiders' offensive line depth chart is this. You could also throw in Denzel Good at right tackle. John Simpson could easily start there at right guard. But the reason why I have Brandon Parker here is just because I want you guys to look that this is this might actually be the starting offensive line for the Raiders. And then you upgrade with Orlando Brown Jr., right? I mean, this looks a lot better. It makes you feel a lot more confident because if you have Brown and Colt Miller, that's two very good tackles, both under the age of 26 years old, who are going to be able to protect Derek Carr, and then that also is going to take a little bit extra pressure off of some of these younger guys. Now, I know a lot of people are like, wait a minute, Mitch, but Orlando Brown Jr. wants to be a left tackle. You're, you're right. You know, he does actually want to be a left tackle. But I'm also going to say this. I actually don't know if that's 100% true. Orlando Brown Jr., here's the key word, wants to be paid like a left tackle. Like, I think any player out there, the reason why Brown wants to play left tackle is because left tackles, they make more money traditionally than the right tackle because you're protecting the quarterback's blind side. I hate to break to Orlando Brown Jr. He's not playing left tackle for the Las Vegas Raiders. That's going to be Colt Miller's job. But for everyone out there, it's like, you know what, Mitch, that trade idea you showed, that was good. And I agree. I actually think the trade idea that I showed was a very good deal for the Raiders. I actually think it might cost more if they try to make the move. But here's the other thing. You also got to go out and pay Orlando Brown Jr. And in terms of paying him, He's going to be on this list. Like, he is looking for this type of money. He's not going to get up in the Trent Williams, David Bakhtiari range, or the Laramie Tunsil range. But he is going to be looking for Ronnie Stanley, 
range. He's going to be looking for Lane Johnson type of money. So my question is this. Should the Raiders go out and trade for Orlando Brown Jr.? I want you to type Y for yes or I want you to type N for no. He is no doubt a talented player. He is no doubt a great upgrade on our offensive line, and he's a player that would do a lot. The reason, though, I'm going to go ahead and type my N for no is this simple reason here. It's just going to cost too much, and I'm not just talking about dollars and cents. It is going to cost a little bit in draft capital as well, and when I really think about some of the other ways the Raiders could build that right tackle position, I think it might make a little bit more sense. But in terms of this, paying a right tackle top left tackle money I just don't think that's very smart. And I don't want to use like the whole Trent Brown situation, but that's kind of what the Raiders did with Trent Brown. Brown went healthy, was a good player. They gave him at the time the highest paid contract at the tackle position to play right tackle. I just don't think that's smart. I think that's like them trying to, they're basically trying to play chess, but they're going to be playing checkers. Like it's just not how it works here. The other reason why I'm going to say, you know what? I'm simply going to pass on going out and trading for Brown is because there's a lot of really talented offensive tackle prospects in this year's draft. Now, I don't know if Penny Sewell or Rashawn Slater fall to 17. If they do, I'd be really, really surprised. If you could tell me right now one of those two dudes slides to 17, I'd say absolutely no no way do I want to trade for Orlando Brown. Christian Darsaw, Tevin Jenkins, those are probably your top two most likely players that the Raiders take at 17. But what happens if the Raiders want to trade down? I still actually could see a scenario where a guy like Tevin Jenkins falls a little bit. Samuel Cosme and Mel Kuyper's latest mock draft went back in 56. Like, I think you could get Liam Meikenberg, Brady Christensen, Dylan Radons, Walker Little, and definitely Walker Little and James Hudson, but mainly Eichenberg, Christensen, Radons, and then also Samuel Cosme. I actually think they all could be available at pick 48 for the simple fact of this. It is a very deep class in terms of the offensive tackle talent. So is Brown better than most of those players? Yes, he is. And he's actually still only 24 years old. This is one of those players when he first came out of Oklahoma, he had really good like tape in terms of like field production, but he didn't perform very well at the combine. That's why he slid down a lot of draft boards, ours included here at Chat Sports. But when it comes to Orlando Brown, he's a good player, but I just don't want to give up all the draft capital when there's a lot of really talented players out there in this upcoming draft. Now, today's show is presented by my good friends, Panda Subs, and it's funny. I was talking to some guys on, on Instagram. If you don't believe me, it's at MitchellRens365. They were posting their videos and their purchase of Panda Subs, and the one guy was like, dude, I can't believe how amazing this protein tastes, and I'm telling you, not only are you going to get 30 grams of protein per scoop, not only is it only 140 calories, not only is it only one gram of sugar, I am not lying when I say this is the best tasting protein out there. My favorite one, I'm actually normally a chocolate fan, the fruity cereal one, it's just, it's wild. Like, it literally tastes like the milk on the bottom of a bowl after some fruity pebbles. Like, it, it's actually insane. You eat it, and you're like, wait a minute. This is, uh, this is healthy? Yes, it's actually very healthy for you. Some of the best protein I've ever had. You can have it as a late-night snack. You can have it after a workout. Bottom line is this. If you go to pandasubs.com and use code Raider Nation, we're going to be hooking you up here. So, usually, this is $49.99. This is now only $29.99. And 99 cents if you also go check out the protein which is what i showed you guys a lot of also go check out their fat burners they just released this brand new fat burner called cuts it's wild i mean it's gonna wake you up it's gonna smack you in the face and i'm not gonna lie to you i've actually lost five pounds over the last two weeks which some people might be like oh, that's not a big deal i have i've lost five pounds the last two weeks and the only thing i've changed about my diet is i've been taking the cuts it works i promise you i wouldn't let you guys down Code Raider Nation, pandasups.com. All right, now we're going to get into the next thing here. It's going to be around Melvin Ingram, and do the Raiders have interest in signing him? I'm going to give this one one shocky head. I think it's a small shred of truth. So one of the reasons why, I know I kind of mentioned it before, why we do this show, right? Because people, they get creative on Instagram, Twitter, this and that. So there's an account out there called Raiders Rang on IG, and they recently posted that the Raiders and Melvin Ingram, they have some mutual interest. And anytime I see something like that, I'm like, okay, like let me let me take a deep dive here. Let me see if it's true. Let's see if it's not. On on the post, they say with Hurst and Key cuts, I could very well see this happening. And when I see words like I could very well see this happening, that to me says like, okay, if Raiders Rang was on the show, he'd probably give this three chucky heads. M my problem is this: it, the only way that it's likely going to happen is if Melvin Ingram takes a very very type of cheap deal. I personally don't see that happening. Now, I understand the idea of them going out 
and maybe trying to upgrade the defensive line, right? Because you have Yannick, you have Max Crosby. Those are solid players. And sure, not having Arden Key, that hurts your depth a little bit. Not having Mo Hurst, and if we're being honest, I'm not really still sure why they decided to move on from him. But sure, you, you could potentially look at adding a little bit more talent here and there. And Melvin Ingram, he would be able to do that. But here's some of the issues. Money, right? I mean, money's a big problem. Right now, the Raiders' salary cap, when I look at the numbers, it's like $6.22 million dollars. That's, that's an okay amount of money, right? You're like, oh, Melvin Ingram could sign a one-year deal for 6.22. Sure. But then you also got to remember this, y'all. The Raiders' 2021 rookie cost, it's going to be about $8.53 million. The reason why the, this is the number, it's because, remember, it's a projected cost. First-round picks make what first-round picks make. Second, third, like it goes down the list. You can find this number on Spotrack if you don't believe me. The reasons why, though, I do think, like, let's just say – Signing Melvin Ingram would make some sense. He's a solid player when healthy. Nobody's going to come on any show. Nobody's going to debate that. When Melvin Ingram is healthy, he is a damn good football player. He also knows the Gus Bradley system very well. One of the reasons why I loved Vontez Perfect, which, yeah, you can disagree with me or not, he knew what Paul Gunther's system was, and he was a player coach. That's what Melvin Ingram would be able to do. But he can also get some outside pressure, which I know, again, we got some of these other players out there. Can you ever really have too much outside pressure? I personally don't think so, especially when you look at over the last three years, which team has ranked dead last in sacks? It's the Las Vegas Raiders. Then also, the reason why I think this makes sense, Cleveland Farrell can play defensive tackle and he can play edge. The fact that he is this versatile, and I actually think that's another big reason why they decided to move on from Mohurst, because Cleveland played really well inside last year. He was a great run stopper, and if he can solidify himself a little bit more inside, then sure, maybe you go out and add Ingram, who can also play outside, to give once in a while a guy like Yannick and Gakwe are a break, but if you're going to bring in him in, he's probably played something a little bit along the lines of a Benson Mayo at role. The reason why it doesn't make sense, he missed 12 games since 2019. He missed nine games last season. Probably going to be a little bit too expensive. Anytime you have a player that's at this age that has his type of resume, he's going to want to make a little bit more money. The Raiders, they can go out and draft edge town. I'm not sitting here saying that the draft class is super deep. It's not, but there are some players a little bit later on in the draft that I'm like, well, hey, why not go ahead and roll the dice? I mean, anyway, the Raiders are trying to get younger. And then there's better players on the market. And when you're like, really, there's better players than Melvin Ingram? Yeah, there's. if I'm talking about just edge rushers alone, and if John Gruden wants to go out and sign a veteran edge rusher, I'm going to tell you who I would go out and pick. But first, I'm curious. Should the Raiders sign Melvin Ingram type J for ya or type 9 for 9? For those of you that don't know this language, Sorry, but if you do know the language, I want you to comment it below in the comment section because I'm curious what you guys have to say. Should the Raiders sign Melvin Ingram, ya yeah or nine? It's a no for me, dog. Uh, I like Melvin Ingram. He's a fun player. He's a good player. Does he know the Bradley system well? Yes. However, I can't sit here and say that he is going to be able to play more than 12 games, and if that's the case, I'm simply going to move on. The other reason why I'm going to sit here and say no is because I'd actually rather have a guy like Justin Houston who – you, he's a lot more reliable. He spent his first eight years in the league with the Kansas City Chiefs. He knows this division from top to bottom. John Gruden has shown interest in him before, and at least eight sacks in four straight seasons. Like, if, if you're telling me Justin Houston and Melvin Ingram are both 100% healthy at this point, maybe Melvin Ingram's better. But in terms of what the Raiders are potentially looking for at this point in the offseason, I want a reliable veteran pass rusher. And let's just be real, Justin Houston is a lot more reliable than Melvin Ingram. Let's look at their 2020 stats here. Advantage, Houston, and it's really not even close. I mean, tackles for loss, quarterback hits, sacks. I mean, I don't need to sit here and tell you that Justin Houston obviously had a much better year than Melvin Ingram. But even when Ingram was able to play, he was slow. He looked a little bit out of shape. And the injuries, man, they, they did really start to slow him down. I mean, seven games, ten tackles, no sacks. But what about the past two seasons now, right? Because Melvin Ingram, he's a little bit healthier in 2019. So let's look at both of the past two seasons. So in games, Houston again, 32 to 20. Tackles, okay, Melvin Ingram caught up to him a little bit here. Tackles for loss, I mean, you're sitting here saying, all right, that's Houston advantage. Quarterback hits, Houston advantage. And then sacks still. But what about their entire career? Because realistically, the games aren't too much different. And they're only one year apart in terms of age. But Houston's just been able to play in more games. And, and this is, again, not really close. It's advantage Justin Houston. I like Melvin Ingram. I get the Gus Bradley connection. All I'm simply saying is this, y'all. If you want a veteran pass rusher because that's why you go out and bring Ingram, simply say this. I really think Justin Houston is worth more money. He's a lot more safer, and he would help our football team more in 2021. 
Now, if you guys are looking for more things going on around the Las Vegas Raiders, you can always hit me up on IG. I'm at MitchellRens365. I'm still breaking down some Raiders mock drafts. I've been telling people all week, if you want me to grade your Raiders mock draft, give me a follow on IG, and then DM it to me at MitchellRens365. Let's get into the latest here around Tanner Muse, and is he still playing linebacker? This one is for Chucky Heads, believe it, baby. So Vincent Bonsignor, he had an interview with Muse, kind of talked about how last year was being a rookie, how 2020 was, you know, with COVID and all that, and what basically Raider fans can expect going forward. So the biggest thing that I got out of this is Muse is still going to be playing linebacker. And I know a lot of us were sitting here like, well, is that going to make sense? Is he going to be able to do that? Because if you remember, Muse was drafted in round three, pick number 100 overall. The Raiders actually traded up for him, but he played safety at Clemson. The Raiders were trying to convert him to linebacker, but with the reports of him bulking up to 230 pounds, he missed last season with a toe injury. He's expected to be ready in a full return. Like, that's all great and dandy, but he really struggled last offseason. He really struggled to be able to pick up the playbook, and he really struggled trying to learn the linebacker position, which I understand. Muse is a good athlete at 6'2", 229 pounds at least. That's what he was chalked in at the very, very start of last season. Now, here's the thing, right? Like, the biggest story that Bonsignor was going on with is like, okay, Muse is preparing. He's trying to get bulked up. He's trying to get ready to be a true linebacker here, which he definitely is. My question is this, is he actually ever going to get on the field? That does still remain to be seen. But the Raiders linebacking depth chart as it stands right now, you got Littleton, Kwiatkowski, and Nicholas Morrow, all your solid options. Javen White and Muse would kind of fit that sideline to sideline linebacker that a guy like Gus Bradley is definitely looking for. But are you going to put somebody out there on the football field that you don't have 100% confidence in? I, I don't know. So how about this? What do you guys think? What is your confidence level on Tanner Muse as it stands right now scale from zero to 100 zero being you're not confident in them whatsoever 100 being you're 100 percent confident in them i mean if we're being realistic from everything i saw last off season and all the reports that i saw i'm probably sitting somewhere around a 40 or a 50 and it's going to be very very telling if the raiders go out and draft one of these top guys here because if you select jeremiah wosukor more if you select micah parsons jamin davis zavin collins I mean, I'm sorry, that's going to even put a guy like Muse even further down the depth chart here because it's not that he doesn't have the talent. He's a good player, but in my opinion, he is more of just this special teams war daddy, and that, that's a good position to be. You need special teams players. He reminds me a lot of a guy like Eric Harris where people sometimes disrespected Harris because he might not have been the best safety, but he was a damn good special teams player. And you know what? That is something that's very, very important. But when it comes down to it, the report of Bonsignor saying Muse is 230 pounds. All I'm saying is this. Don't take that report and just say, oh, he's definitely going to play linebacker. I mean, Muse was 229 pounds. Is it really that much of a difference? All right, the last thing we're going to talk about here is the Raiders OTA news. The Raiders, they begin phase one of OTAs today, right? Well, wait a minute, Mitch. Last week, the players skipped or voted to skip the in-person phase of the program in favor of an all-virtual format. You are 100% right, but you know what? This might be some of the best news I heard today. Some players are still showing up to Henderson because they want to be able to play and practice. Anticipate a lot of the younger guys being the ones that show up or a lot of players that might be really trying to get that workout bonus. But nonetheless, you got some young guys showing up, which is something that I'm really happy about. It's voluntary, and they don't have to do it, but they are deciding to do it. And if any of the players out there are watching the show and you're a little bit sore after showing up working out, remember, pandasups.com, code RaiderNation to save 40%.